Hey guys, today we get to take a look at some of the Ixlon cards and what prices they are. Now the foil dinosaurs, for whatever reason, it is still very early on, are very expensive. And that might be because casual players really want them, they are mythic dinosaurs. The most expensive of the bunch right now is the Carnage Tyrant. Reminds me of another card that was printed in Meriden and used to be in the introduction deck or one of the uh, pre-constructed decks and it was very good. Essentially having Trample and Hexproof, that's a good combination with 7-6 power. It pretty much chews up anything else and it deals a lot of damage and they cannot destroy it or they would have to destroy in a way that wouldn't target it. So the dinosaur deck could be, so mana ramp seems very prevalent given the fact that everyone's making various treasures and these treasures seem to be relatively easy to accumulate and go for broke. Now this one is the sun's avatar. He is the, has ability to tutor up. So he has trample vigilance haste. He's probably going to deal damage to your opponent. When I initially looked at him, I looked at him at, okay, cost eight. This maybe comes out turn 11, 12. It, it's very expensive. Emoko cost eight. And Emoko was a card that if you played, your opponent would have very difficulty recovering from. So that's kind of the comparison I have. But then I felt, hmm, maybe the treasures, all these Lotus Petals that are being produced all the time, perhaps this comes down on turn six. If it comes down on turn six consistently, then it is going to do a massive amount of damage. And you are going to put a lot of dinosaurs into the battlefield. That is very, very good. Now, it does not have hex proof, so it is subject to removal. And especially instant speed removal would be very good against it. I have, my gut feeling tells me that standard is a little too fast right now with all the red decks for this to be viable. But who knows? Next, Spyglass. Here we have the age-old story of should we ever ban cards or should we just make cards that kind of ban those cards? And this is a card that I wish we had a little earlier on. Cost two, as it enters the battlefield, look at opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Activate abilities of sources with the chosen card name can't be activated unless there are mana abilities. So obviously you cannot pick something like a land or maybe an elf of some type. I am very, very intrigued by the fact that they could have printed this as well as Piffing Needle at any time to prevent, I don't know, Smuggler's Copter is kind of good. A lot of cards that were banned I don't feel like should have been banned. You just print cards that are very good against it. Like... Did Mardu vehicles get worse? The answer is no, but they printed a card called a braid. And that makes Mardu vehicles very, very bad. So next we have the Ixlan or the Tristana, Tristana Voice of Thunder. Very expensive. Uh, reminds me a lot of Zagana. I was trying to figure out what that card was, but it was Zagana. Uh, it comes in play, draw a card for each creature you control. That's exactly Zagana's effect. She probably, I mean, these two probably go hand in hand together. Uh, she has power and toughness, each equal to number of cards in your hand, and you have no maximum hand size. So, mm, it's a lot of good stuff together, but it's still very, it re relies on you having many, many creatures and many, many hands in cards in hand but you also need creatures so if you play your creatures out assuming that they're not tokens you're actually doing a disservice because it's getting weaker it costs seven like everything in this set costs a, a bazillion mana right so do i believe these are playable i i don't know like i think red deck wins is still the best deck out there admiral beckett brass one Grixis, and then he gives other pirates plus one plus one, which is a great ability. Here's an interesting thing. How are you going to hit someone with, uh, what does it look like, four? No, three or more pirates. That is a lot of pirates that are hitting in. 
Like, they, they have to hit your opponent, and then you steal something, which is great. But I guess this would be a very good card against dinosaurs, right? If your pirates had flying or evasion of some type. And then you could steal their giant dinosaur. <laughs> this set makes no sense. Let's imagine some of the things that are going to happen in standard. You will have dinosaurs driving pirate ships. You have we will have dinosaurs driving subways or something. Or and then it just doesn't none of this makes any sense. Like how are dinosaurs going to get into these vehicles? Like I'm very concerned for their safety. Anyway, enough of that. Most of the value so far is in the mythics. I will digest Jace. I think what I hopefully will happen with Jace will people will look at him and be really unimpressed and then his price will plummet and then it would be time to buy him up. He is very good. I don't think he's $25 good. I don't think he's $15 good. But if he goes down to 10 I think that you do have a play on that even though he's going to be reprinted into Oblivion, which I understand. Next, you would have Copa. Copa is one double blue for a 2-2. Two -two. Spells opponents cast that target a Merfolk you control cost two more. Abilities opponent activate that target a Merfolk cost two more. Pseudo Hexproof. I don't necessarily like Pseudo Hexproof very much because if the card was essential, they would just pay the two, right? Yes, it's a little annoying, but two is not so out there that they couldn't pay it. I mean, it's a good it's a good wizard. It's a legendary creature, and for a rare to be over the price, not many rares are over the price of a booster pack MSRP, and this is one of them. Another one of them is this raptor. So it is one of the cheaper dinosaurs. I think the cheapest dinosaur I've seen so far, at least in rares, was the two and a white for a Philia-like dinosaur, which is not bad. It's okay. This one is interesting. You need to deal damage. Uh, whenever it is dealt damage, draw a card. So if you can deal, you can ping him four times, you're going to draw four cards a turn, which is incredible. So I like the enrage mechanic. I'm not sure if dinosaur I, dinosaurs really need something to help them and i'm not entirely sure what it could be it could be, be maybe something i mean you know what they need they need a mystic elf right that can produce what well, you know what they need they need noble hierarch right then dinosaurs i would say oh okay dinosaurs kind of legitimate because then on turn two you play your two free flyer then turn three you play this dude and it's just accelerating a turn earlier it would make them so much better than I believe they currently are at um, at this time. It's just so expensive. I cannot imagine people playing dinosaurs when you have a red deck wind meta type of deal. And here we have an EDH card. Boneyard Par Parley. 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 Five in double black. Exile up to five target creature cards from graveyards. An opponent separate these cards into two piles put all cards from the pile of your choice onto the battlefield under your control and the rest into their owner's graveyard so this is definitely a edh play it's incredibly good if anything i've learned from edh is buy foils don't worry about the non-foils buy foils when you can unfortunately what happens is everyone knows the same so here's the interesting part everyone has the same information Everyone knows that this is going to be a good foil. And therefore, the foil price is not going to be cheap enough for you to buy into to get a really good deal. Now, if you need it, buy it. But for the most part, kind of meh. And lastly, we're going to talk about something a lot of you want to talk about. It is the land. The check lands have been reprinted three, four times. They are also called your buddy lands. They're good, but they're not valuable. That being said, if you do have them, dig them up because there's two factors, right? It's the same thing with um, any type of land. More people will want them now. Now is the time to offload those check lands that have been sitting in your uh, bulk bins for a long time because people actually want them and you can trade four of them. What I like to do is I like to trade four of them into something of higher value, right? preferably one card 
and there's no there's not many cards you can do that that uh, that the person sitting beside you would want to do that type of trade but for lands they're more than happy to do it so four lands let's call let's say it costs four dollars a piece you can trade it sixteen dollars you can get a nice modern card for that and that's why i like anyway that's it bye guys